I've been told. Like, I've been told that I have a majestic voice. That's what I'm like saying. Like you the Lion King or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have a majestic voice. So so let me ask you something, man. Like you posted this video that like tripped me out because you said it was like your favorite song right now, the Jennifer song. I watched the video because I was waiting on quality to come. Were you serious or was that a joke? No, I really the song is catchy, man. It is really the hook is really catchy. And I like how he got discovered. He was singing that song in a bathroom at, at the, at high, in high school. One of his boys recorded it. They put it on, on Facebook, and it blew up. That dude has a record deal now. Nice. I love the, the catchiness of it. And it reminds me of a, of a, of a song from the 90s that has is very 90s inspired. Okay. I think that's why I like it. All right. I, I didn't quite fully understand. I thought maybe you were just being... Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I I really actually think the song is pretty catchy. No, oh, okay. Yeah, Jay, you like that song? I don't even know what y'all talking about. Cause Jay don't go on Facebook. Yeah, he he's don't. too busy. Yeah, he is. Look at that mustache. That mustache say he too busy. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> too busy grooming. That penitentiary too sweet mustache, don't he? <laughs> too sweet. <laughs> Oh man! You got wild, man. How could you betray the whispers like that, man? And get get and thin your mustache down. Hey man. Jay, what's that mean? <laughs> Shout out to Scotty, Scotty. his twin brother, Scotty Carlos. Scott, baby, yeah. Scotty Scott. When, when his twin brother's name Carlos? No, no, no. Man. <laughs> I was I was wondering what he was talking about. <laughs> and there's Scotty and there's Scott, bro. They're no. both names. It's Walter. Yeah. It's Walter and Scotty. Is it? Yes. You, hey, Walter. Yeah, you made that up. You was like, it's Scotty and Scott. <laughs> no, it's Walter and Scotty. One was named Scotty and one was named Scott. I'm wrong. I'm, so yeah. that, there's one named Walter? That it's Walter and Scotty. It's not Scotty and Scott. <laughs> I, for years, I thought that, bro. Seriously. I don't think there's a parent out there that would do that to their kid. Like, Hey man, black parents would do crazy things to their kids. All right. Kanye named his, his daughter Chicago. That's so. a good name, though. It's a good name. Chicago George named all of his kids after him. Chicago, George though. Foreman? That's true. George Foreman did the worst by naming all his kids George. George, crazy. Yeah. But uh, I didn't know. I didn't know why Walter and Scott. Don't they usually try to put the names that kind of sound alike? You know, when you have twins. Maybe it's. Maybe they were naming them after Walter Scott. Like maybe that was like the dedicate. I don't know. Can I get the show started okay, though? That is, yeah, go ahead. Thank you, you brought the whispers up, man. I know. Can't believe if I bring the whispers up around you, it's we gonna rabbit trail. All right. Oh, and welcome into the barbershop nine one eight. You up in here with your man, Big Drew. Big Drew. J Rock. <laughs> Boom. And the one and only Raw Dog. <laughs> We got a jam-packed show for you today. Pack of jam, baby. And a little bit of jelly. Just a touch. Just a little bit. And we're going we're gonna to talk about the NFL. We're going to talk about what happened in New England. I know we're all happy about that. Yay. Patriots back hey, in the Super every Bowl. Every story has to have its villain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, and that's, yeah. So, I don't know who to be. We, yeah, we'll talk about that later. We're going to talk about the NBA and the All-Star game and who got snubbed and all those different things. And we're going to talk about... Uh, we're going to have our final cut and just a lot of different things. We're going to talk sports. So keep it right here for the Barbershop 918. My favorite part of the Barbershop 918 is the word on the street. Which what? Word on the street. It's a sweet one. <laughs> that boy is just anointed. Ooh, man. It's just He's dripping. Crying. It's dripping off of you. I have so I'm much letting, talent. I'm letting God use me, man. I'm letting him <laughs> use me. Let, let, you be a vessel. You be a vessel. I'm a to vessel. <laughs> I am a conduit, sir. <laughs> All right. So now All that right. We, we've secured our spot in hell, let's continue on with the show. <laughs> let's, let's back over there for a second. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> All right. So we gonna uh, we got to go ahead and talk about the we got to talk about music news because in the word in the street we talk about television as well as movies. So we're going to start it off with a little bit of music news. J-Rock, what you got for us, boss? Okay, as far as the Billboard charts, everything is pretty much the same. 
you know, G-Eazy, Kendrick Lamar, Bruno Mars, Post Malone. They're the same. Uh, big news coming out this week. Uh, Drake, he released a EP called Scary Hours. It had two singles, God's Plan and Diplomatic Immunity. The God's Plan single, it, it broke a Spotify single day streaming record of 4.3 million streams wow. this past Monday. Hmm. That's crazy. Drake is out here eating real good, man. He, uh, on the Diplomatic Immunity song, he's uh, taking a shot at our good friend Joe Button. Uh, they had a beef that uh, started about two years ago. Drake decided to finally clap back at him two years later. You a know, late, when, didn't he? Yeah, he's a little late to the party. But uh, both songs, I like both from Drake. Uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, he hasn't found he has he has still somebody else's sound. Uh, so they didn't really like it, but I like both songs. But uh, he's a, Drake, he's a ghostwriter, though, bro. Yeah, scoot over a little bit, Jay, so I can see you. The there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> he just magically moved. He huh? did. It was, it was like magic. No, Dra- well, Drake, the problem with Drake is the whole ghostwriter thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We talked about this before, but that still bothers me a little bit that he has people writing for him. It's not like. Uh, an R&B singer with a songwriter. Hip hop is a little different. It should be coming from you. I don't. I don't know. Now, that bothers me. Now, it's at the point now that whatever Drake puts out, people are gonna love it, whether it's crap or not. I mean, are are his songs really that good? Jay, are they quality songs? That, uh, like what just got put out? Is it quality stuff? Is it good? I like both of them. Uh, as my boy uh, uh, Skybox Chris would say. Uh, Boy One is the MVP because of his productions on the song. You know, Drake's bars are average, but the production is excellent on this tr- on the track. I will say, his whoever does his production, they they kill it. They do. Okay. All right. What else uh, you got? In music news, boss. Uh, this weekend, uh, this Sunday, we have the Grammys. Uh, the Grammys are coming early this year. Uh, it's gonna be it's a big year because you know we got Jay Z. And Kendrick Lamar, they're going up for best rap performance along with Cardi B and Big Sean. And I can't forget about the Migos. So it, to me, it's a win-win situation. Jay-Z has won over 20 Grammys in his career. So I just hope that this is the night that uh, Kendrick Lamar can shine. Here's one for best album. Not just best rap album. I'm talking about best album, period. Because I think some of those guys are nominated for just best album, not just best rap album. I think that was the big deal. About the oh, yeah. Ch- uh, Childish Gambino, Kendrick Lamar, and Jay-Z, uh, and Bruno Mars, they're going up against Lord. They're all going up for Album of the Year. You know, Outcast Album of the Year, the, right. Yeah, Outcast that was the first was the time last. that many folks of color have gone up for Album of the Year. Yeah, Outcast mm-hmm. was uh, 15 years ago. They was the last one of color to win the Album of the Year at the 15 Grammy. years, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, no. somebody's name is Lord, huh? Yeah. Wow, that's... Well, it's L-O-R-U-D-E, so it's more like Lord, Lord, I don't know. That's, I don't know, man. Oh, okay. Lordy, Lord, Lordy, Lordy, Lord, 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 Lord. Lord's like, I don't know, man. She can't win. This is the one time I don't want the Lord to win. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I would have said that. I would... <laughs> Lord, <laughs> help! <laughs> and I am a line crosser, and I would not have said that. Sir. Yeah, you. And you... I'm gonna pass the rock to you for the box office news, <laughs> raw dog. I'm just getting the mic out my hand. Want to real quick, sir? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> That's me. <laughs> All right, so this is a slow week uh, for movies. Ain't nothing really big popping right now, uh, unless you want to watch. A bunch of young folks in a sci-fi movie. There's Maze Runner, uh, which is supposed to be the finale. I don't really know that much about the first two movies, to be honest with you. Apparently, there were two movies about Maze Runners. This is the final one. Uh, Maze Runner, The Death Cure. It's the epic finale. Eh, whatever. Uh, And then there's one called Hostels that I've seen commercials with, uh, with Christian Bale. Looks kind of interesting. It's about this uh, soldier who has issues with Native Americans back in the day, and he ends up having to help them in the situation. And it kind of really explores the race relations between uh, you know, white folks and Native Americans back in the day. So it looks kind of interesting. But yeah, it's a slow week for movies coming out, man. I think everybody's just kind of 
getting ready for Black Black Panther, uh, February sixteenth. So a lot of a lot of the movies around it gonna be it's gonna be some slow weekends. So can I let me ask you a question? Like at some point we're gonna need you to to break down and give everybody in Black America like a tutorial on what to expect with Black Panther. Like how do you say the yes. name? How do you say the name of the city? Like how do you you know like how do you say his name? Like these are all things that people are gonna need yeah. to to figure we, out. We got to get people caught up because yeah. a lot of these folks ain't really ain't never read the comic book. They just going because Jay. everybody. Yeah, like this dude right here. <laughs> never read the comic book. I think, you point, me. I think he pointed at me. <laughs> I don't know. No, you like me off. We're pointing at you. Every time you saw point the movie, other way, like, man. Point the other way. You were oh. pointing at me. There you go. <laughs> Look me off, man. What's going on? No, what I'm saying is, Jay, every time me and you get, talk, get, get to talking about superheroes, you just like nod off somewhere, and you can see it in your eyes. You go somewhere else with it. So how, how are you excited about Black Panther? And you ain't never read the comic book. Who's excited? Are you not excited, sir? I'm boycotting the movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> just like you boycotted the NFL. Yep. I don't have nothing to say to you, sir. You had oh, like God. you had like <laughs> si- you had six fantasy teams. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. I had a burner account. Somebody was running my fantasy. Yeah, football. you was yeah, you was the KD of fantasy football this year. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he really was. All right. So the box the box office for last weekend, uh, number five uh, was Mary. huh? Proud Mary. Gotta be. <laughs> no, Proud Mary ended up. Uh, it's at number eleven this week, sir. So. You thought it was gonna go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. the other movie, man. Now, that's going down, sir. That's going down. Uh, number five is The Greatest Showman. Number four is The Post. That's a Tom Hanks movie. Uh, number three, Den of Thieves. Made 15 million, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, it did okay. I really didn't expect it to be in the top five, to be honest with you, but I don't know, man. Something about, uh, you know, O'Shea and 50 Cent and all of them in the same movie. People went out and saw it. Um, number two, uh, 12 Strong. That's the military movie uh, with, uh, uh, what's his name, Chris Hemsworth, uh, about the, the first team that went into um, Afghanistan to look for uh, Osama bin Laden. Yeah. So that came in at number two. Maybe, maybe that made 15 million, but number one is still going strong. Jumanji, welcome to the jungle. Uh, made 19 million uh, last weekend. Still going strong. This is about the third or fourth week that's been number one, man. It's killing the game right now. Yeah. But yeah, Proud Mary's at number eleven, uh, and that's all you need to know. All right. That's all you need to know. That's it. Yeah. And see, I actually talked to somebody that actually went and saw Proud Mary. Did, did you see it, Drew? No, my wife went to go see it. Yeah. She... My uh, my sister, my brother in law went and saw it, and I and I, and I asked them. I said, "So what did you think?" And she's they said basically the best parts were in the previews. Yeah, and that it probably would have been better off as a rental, and they went primarily to support Taraji. Yeah, I mean, and the project was is worth that. Like, I think that's that's pretty much it. Like, you go just to support that there's a black movie out, and it helps. Couldn't you rent, couldn't you rent it and do the same thing? Uh, you know, you won't. But you won't. You won't. I think a lot of people want our movies to do good in the box office, and there's nothing wrong with that. You you want that a little bit, but they got to be good though. That's the problem. Well, I think you want them to make some money so that when a good script comes around and a good opportunity comes around, it can get green-lighted, you know? We don't get that. Remember what happened after Soul Plane came out? We couldn't get a decent black movie for five, six years after Soul Plane. Hey, but Kevin Hart is almost a billionaire now. He had to start somewhere. How many years between Kevin Hart blowing up and Soul Plane? How many <laughs> years, know. man? When did Paper Soldier come out? I think that came oh out before. Oh, my God. He went from Paper Soldier, where he made $125, to hey, Soul Plane, where he got a hoodie award, to making Jumanji, which has been Jay. number one in America for, since Christmas. Jay, they didn't that even is have a rags to riches story. For Paper Soldier. They didn't even have catering for them, man. They- <laughs> no, they I read didn't. it in the book. He said, Dane There was no catering <laughs> when nobody sagged, nobody, nobody was in the Screen Actors Guild. That was totally off the books, man. They did it with a camcorder and some cell phones. Yeah. Yeah, hey, it's a funny movie. I love Paper Soldier. Uh, yeah, I had well, to buy it two times on DVD. That's suspect right there, sir. Yeah, it is. 
You I, also said earlier that you don't want the Lord to win, so I don't know. Yeah. What's up, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. So, uh, a suspect, Jay. all right, so it's time for us to talk about, uh, to move over to television news. What we got for television news, boss? Oh, I guess that's shy. me, isn't it? Oh, shy. Oh, I haven't shy. seen the shy. shy. Yeah. You got to see the shy. The episode. You got to see the shy, Drew. <laughs> it's getting better. I don't like better. to watch my own work. It's kind of difficult, you know. <laughs> <laughs> for all those that don't understand what we're talking about, the brother with the hat and the nappy beard and big mustache kind of look like he could be Drew's older brother. <laughs> and look, look at Drew. Where, where are you at? Look at Drew. He kind of look like him. Look at him. <laughs> so anyway, the stories are getting better and better, man. Uh, I love the acting. I love the writing. The kids cuss a lot. The little kids cuss a lot. That kind of bothers me, but I'm pretty sure that's how a lot of them little bad kids, that's how they talk, you know. But, uh, I love the fact that it is set actually in Chicago. Because, you know, a lot of times you see these movies and series, they set it somewhere in Canada. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it costs less to, you know, film there. But this is actually in Chicago to the point that I, I annoy my family when we're watching it. So I'm like, yeah, I know where that is. I know where that is. They're like, shut up. We get it. You're from Chicago. Shut up, Dad. You know what I mean? They don't say that. So I take it it's a lot of death in this show? Um... There's only uh, honestly only been two deaths. Oh, uh-huh. so what? So what? If kids, I've never seen it. So what should I be able to expect? Is it like watching Power or something like that, or is it like The Wire? Like what is it? Like what's? The- it's probably a lot. Like you get a lot of lives that are interconnected with each other. And uh, I agree with Raw Dog on that. Yeah, a lot, a lot of police of- police work in it, so it's it's similar to The Wire. I mean, it has a few of the stars from The Wire oh, okay. in there. All right. So it's it's very well done. I, I'm really, really, um, I'm really proud of it because I mean, last time Chicago was represented in the movie was Chirac. <laughs> that was horrible. And you know how terrible that was. That was horrible. That was real. Horrible. I haven't forgiven Spike Lee for that, man. Yeah. I haven't forgiven him for that. Yeah, I'm not pro you forgiving him either. <laughs> so yeah. I, mean, and, I know Sharon, Chef Sharon was a big fan of uh, what's the name of it? He's uh, got to have it. He's got to. He's got to have it. The TV series. You know, but I I can't get past the fact that he made Shy Rock, and I can't get past Spike Lee little flourishes that he still does that he was doing back in '89. Yeah, enough let, already. Let grow it up go. as a let filmmaker, it, sir. Let it go. Grow up, period. Like get above five feet. How about that? Wow, you are yeah. angry, man. I'm not angry. Angry. Dog. I'm actually in a pretty good mood. This is this is birthday dog. He's out here. Everybody can get it. Arr, <laughs> arr. All right, so what uh, what else we got when it comes to television news, man? You, uh, Black Lightning. So th- you watch you watched week two of Black Lightning. I didn't get a I, chance to catch up on week two. Yet. I watched it and I was surprised. I, I did not know that the daughter, the oldest daughter, yeah. I didn't know that she was gay. Yeah. Okay. So when the scene, the love scene came with her and the girl, I was like, "What? What? Uh, wait, what's happening?" But you didn't look away. I was totally... No, I didn't look away. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna name this the is, blasphemy episode. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was just surprised. Apparently, her name is gonna be Thunder because yeah. she has the, the Black Lightning's powers. Yeah. Now, as you said last week, it is over the top and it is corny, but it's but pretty good. It is. Like, I still want to watch it, although it's sort of like his you like his his uniform like not uniform but like his costume everything is kind of but that's what black lightning even from the comic is like when static gets in the picture like the the villains everything he's going to have around him is going to come across as over the top and corny but that is going to match the comic a lot better so it's probably not going to be that great of a show but I'm going to support it and watch it until they pull the plug uh All right. Just because, not just saying, you know, I'm supporting anything black, but because I think it's it's I think it's going to be some interesting storylines. I think it's going to be worth. This episode attention. was a lot more violent than I expected it to be. There was a couple of people that got killed. Like it, it, I was like surprised at the level of violence, and I was surprised at at the love scenes that are in there. I'm like, wow, I didn't expect this from something from DC. You know, they seem they like they're pretty, you know, conservative, yeah. but apparently. 
Now, <laughs> all, know, all of the shows on the CW guy have some love scenes, and it's it's always a fair amount of same sex love scenes as well. So wow, I was I was shocked. Yeah, not by the I was just I didn't know I just didn't know, and I wasn't expecting that. And I was looking around like, whoa, did anyone? Did anyone? What happened? I, I wasn't expecting that because it's a comic. It's a comic book show, you know. And, but maybe I ain't read comic books in a long time. Maybe I'm just way old school and I need to get caught up, bro. <laughs> maybe that's me. Yeah, that's why you was, that's why you was looking around. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, by the way, thanks for saying that as my wife walked into the room. I appreciate that, Drew. She looked at me when you said that. You know that. They looked at you when you said that. Okay. No. <laughs> you just paid you attention. Me, you set me up, but whatever. All right. So, what else we got with television news? Is that it? That's it. All right, so it's time for us to transition on over and talk about some other things we got going. I actually don't have my list with me, so let's just go ahead and switch on over to NFL talk. Let's just do that. Might as well. Yeah, okay. and then I'll pull my list up later. <laughs> but, but the uh, on the so prepared. Yeah, so on the NFL, man, like, look, bottom line is we the Eagles are in. They're probably going to give Tom Brady a better chance. That's my say on it. The refs did their thing usual, and, and they, they came out with a, with a victory. The refs got a dub as usual. So I don't – Tom Brady comes out as the hero. They act like his hand was half falling off, and he still had a great <laughs> comeback. Whatever. Whatever. He always has a great comeback. Yeah. That's who he is, man. Now, will they win this year? I My hope, heart yeah. says I hope not. No, they will. Inconvincingly. Yeah, it you think they're gonna beat the Eagles up pretty bad? I think it's gonna yes, be real bad. They're gonna beat the Eagles up. Who cares about the Eagles? It'll be like it'll be something. Yeah, look, just because <laughs> you Cowboys didn't. No, hey, hey, hey! Don't start. No, that's what it is. No, you started. You started. No, no, no. That's what it. That's we, what we it is. Even, I didn't even say nothing about the team. That's in Arlington, Texas. It's all you. The Eagles are not gonna win. That's all we're gonna say. You, Why are you the saying that? You Eagles and the Cowboys are in the same. Now, Tom Brady, what? the greatest quarterback of all time. What? No, what I'm saying, Jay, just listen for a second. What I'm saying is, because the Eagles and the Cowboys have such a rivalry, and you hate the Eagles so much, you're just gonna come right out and just hate on the Eagles. You ain't gonna. I don't stop. hate anybody. You but like I the strongly Eagles? dislike the Philadelphia Eagles. I just Why? feel like the New England Patriots no, no, are I a. Want... Why? Why do? Why do you hate the Eagles so much? I didn't say hate. I Why said strongly you dislike? dislike. Why? Because they are one of three other teams that are in the NFC East. I strongly dislike the uh, Redskins was... of Landover, Maryland. So, and I point. strongly dislike so, the Giants of East Rutherford, get... New Jersey. That was Jersey. my point, Jay. So that's the whole thing. We don't believe that you're going to take a look at this because you're biased. Like you're looking you're at this because it's, you don't, you're, you've got, you're a hater. You don't want anyone from your division <laughs> to have success. No, I'm not a hater. What? All I'm saying is that what? New England is more complete than the Eagles. The only word the Eagles have them beat at is at the wide receiver you position. You just admitted that you dislike the Eagles, bro. You just admitted. I did not. I said I strongly bias built in. This night. You sat there in the I same. said this night. Like Nikes. D-I-S-N-I-K-E. That's not like. That's Nike. You need to listen. Coming up, man. You're getting up there in bro, age. You need to listen, you brother. Did what I heard, right. man? So did we you, got, did you not hear what I heard? All right. I thought I heard him basically say he didn't like the Eagles because they're in the NFC East with the Cowboys. So therefore, there's a straight up bias, right? It is. And I gotta move and, and for time's sake, we have to move forward uh from this. Now we got another week, and next week we'll talk about our Super Bowl predictions. I gotta just poke the bear one more time real quick. Now, Raw Dog, how do you feel about the Pro Bowl? Are you gonna watch it? No. Why? Cause no, I never watched the Pro Cause Bowl. No ba- <laughs> Because no bears are represented in the Pro Bowl, or do you really feel like the Pro Bowl is trash? <laughs> I have never sat down and watched the Pro Bowl. There's nothing interesting about the Pro Bowl. Why? Today. I'm asking, and, and it leads into the rest of the show. Why do you not want to watch the Pro Bowl? Um, because it's anticlimactic. It, ha- it doesn't have no effect on the, on the on the league. It's it's not the Super Bowl, and that's what we want to see. Yeah, it's just it doesn't serve a purpose. It's not like the All Star Game in basketball. Well, and that's what you know we're what about mean? to talk about right now. It's time for us to talk NBA talk and Thunder talk, and we're gonna get into the All Star selections. And th- the point that I'm bringing up is a lot of people are passionate about hating All Star Game and 
and Pro Bowls and everything else because they're exhibition games and they're pointless. But, you know, but when their player gets, stu- you know, gets snubbed, then all of a sudden it's like all oh, the injustice and and everyone's upset about it. So what's the difference between the Pro Bowl and the All-Star game that, that really makes it that big of a difference? Because I don't see the difference, man. Like, you don't have to convince me. What- well, the Pro Bowl was held at the end of the season. I think it's about timing. If the All-Star game, if the NBA All-Star game was held at the end of the season, people wouldn't care. The All-Star game is held right in the middle of the season, man. Right when things are just starting to heat up. It's all about timing. And I think that's why people get a little bit more passionate about the NBA NBA All-Star game versus the NFL Pro Bowl game. And they put the Pro Bowl game right next to the Super Bowl. It's like a week within the Super Bowl. Who cares about that? The NBA All-Star is timed perfectly. It's at the penultimate time of the season. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right before right before trade deadline. Same thing with the right? ba- like with like baseball almost. Yeah, like baseball. Oh, yeah. Baseball All-Star actually has a point. And hockey, right? I uh, I don't know, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, like hockey. Thank you. So <laughs> he don't know. He don't know. He really don't. He just said that. All right. So I, when it comes How you looking? <laughs> So of all the different snubs that people have pointed out, you know, we've got Paul George, Andre Drummond, uh, Chris Paul. Who do you think was the one that, that really got snubbed the most? Who do you think really Paul deserved? George. Paul George. I would, George. I, 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 be honest with you, I'm going to go with what Raw Dog said a few weeks ago, and I'm going to say Andre Drummond. Because to be honest with you, who in the East really is, is a big man in the East that's really, he should be there. Yeah, you got a point there. You know, I feel like. As far as in the East. Yeah. You got a point there. Yeah, I think that that's think, well, they got, well, Kevin Love, you know, he's been sick and Al Horford, obviously he's with the number one seeded Boston Celtics. So, you know, that's the reason why they made the game. I don't feel like, you know, Kevin Love should be a part of the game. I mean, he's been stinking, you know, for the most part for the last couple of weeks. In fact, you know, they're talking about he should be traded out of uh, yeah. Cleveland right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're probably going to do it, too. They want to get George Hill over there, man. Yeah. They want anybody on that roster to. But uh, Kevin, they got. They don't want Kevin. And when you when we were playing them, I was looking at their roster, and they have a crazy, scary roster. That I think that if they can survive to the playoffs, those are enough vets that will not give up. Like I've never seen a roster that the front court really is better. I mean, not the court. The second unit is better than the net. Like the second yeah, unit should be the net. Really bad though. They got yeah, beat by they keep getting a third beat. team that's not not even really. Living up to their potential. Yeah, we How do you put, explain that? We, like Cantor t- retweeted, yeah, like we put 148 on them. Like we put 148 strive on for greatness, baby. To be, yeah, like I don't know. He said strive for greatness and then he just dropped <laughs> out. Like he went away. Like I don't know what happened. He got excited. <laughs> Where you at, Jay? Way to go, Jay. I'm still here, man. He's still here. I can hear his voice, but he, he straight dropped out of the picture. <laughs> hey, man, you're a little premature, ain't you? <laughs> What I'm happened, gonna, man? I don't know. I'm gonna try to get you back. <laughs> Look at him help. with that black beard. <laughs> help me. Help me. Help me, please. I can't do nothing until you get yourself back in, man. Like I I'm I'm crippled on my part of it. Anyway, let's just me and you talk and just leave him over there. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, you gotta I get... agree with you. I agree that Andre Drummond uh probably should have at least uh been one of the reserves. Yeah. At the very least. No, I definitely think so, man. I think that that's uh that, that's going to be one of the key components of I think Jay's trying to come back now. I think that's going to be one of the key I, components. I ain't on my you. way back. Way back. <laughs> He's so musical. Why are you interrupting us, man? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> All right, so, but no, I think that Andre Drummond should have been in. And, and when I look at, I'm, I'm sorry. I went back to the all-star game and we were, we weren't talking. I got distracted by Jay. Pop- but yeah, I think that that, for me, that's the only snub. I'm mean, not the only snub, but like, I do feel like, I knew when Paul George came to the West that it was a good chance he wouldn't make it. Uh, do I feel like Klay Thompson is having an all-star year? No, not this no. year. Not at all. No. So when I think about uh, potential people deserve to be there. Draymond Green shouldn't have made it. There's no way. He's been no. hurt. No, I don't think. I think I, I don't. I, I'll put you like this. Kevin Durant, I, I can't argue with. Kevin Durant should be an all-star game. But you know what, to be honest with you, if you say, if you say Chris Paul hasn't been on the court enough, well, neither is Steph this year. You know, and so, and both of them got winning records. Both of them have maintained first place with their teams. Steph is more famous. 
Exactly. He has, you know, he has the worldwide appeal where Chris Paul doesn't. And so for me, I wouldn't be, wouldn't have been mad if, if either one of them wouldn't have made it. Um, I like Russ's realness when he basically hit it right on the money when he was like, we got people with four people from one team making it. And, and I'm going to speak about that. But then he also pointed out Damian Lillard, who does complain every single year that he's getting snubbed. And are you one of the best point guards in the, you know, in the league? If, who, who do we take out for you to put you in an all-star game? Yeah, and, I, he's yeah. one of the best. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, so calm that down. But when it comes to, I like the point. I don't know if Russ was going this deep with the point. But I like the idea that the all-star game should be a representation of not just the best players but also to have an appeal for all of the markets to some degree. So I do believe that sometimes you do open up the door and you, you say, okay, let's bring in a Lou Williams. Like let's bring in somebody who's playing well this year, or we bring in somebody from a smaller market and we, you know, just to expose that market to, you know, to the, if the player's playing well enough, uh, Devin that Booker. Makes sense. That makes yeah. sense money-wise. Yeah. The NBA should really push for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man, basically you having re- representatives as opposed to people that are picked, quote-unquote. You have rep representatives of, of each market uh, that are playing well, obviously. You just can't just pick anybody. But I see what you're saying. That makes a lot more sense. And it makes NBA because that means more people are going to tune into the All-Star game. Yeah. I mean, I, for me, it makes it much more appealing. When I know, like, for, like, when I watch the baseball all-star game, I wait for the Royals to, whatever Royal I got that's about to, uh, yeah, we're gonna do it. Uh, whatever all-star, whatever <laughs> Royal we got, I'm always excited to see when he come up to bat. So for me, I'm always down for that. Like, I'm gonna watch the Pro Bowl because I wanna see a couple of my Chiefs play. You know what I'm saying? Bottom line, that's it. I, I know it's an exhibition. It's the same thing with, with basketball. So, yeah, I do want PG in the game. Uh, but at the end of the day, I kind of knew that this might not happen. And it's funny how yeah. ain't nobody protesting Carmelo. It's sort of like, yeah. No, nobody, nobody said none of Carmelo. What's nobody, crazy? Is, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. He, if we were in the East, if he was still in the East, he would be an all-star this year. That's the sad thing. And put, even if he would have put up the same exact numbers that he's putting up now, he would have still been starting in the East just off of reputation, name, and, you know, saying like his, cause he still did good. He still has some good numbers. He just didn't have West numbers. You know, like he couldn't out, he couldn't get more votes than people in the what, you know, some of those other stars. So, all right. So, uh, we need Jesse up in this piece, man. So we're going to go ahead and try to call on Jesse and get him up in here. Um, we need Jesse. <laughs> we need, run, Jesse, run. Okay. You got. Remember when Jesse ran in 1980? Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all don't remember that. Of course we don't. So <laughs> in case you, you're new to the Barbershop 918 and you've never really been able to pay attention to or you've never seen when we do the We Need Jesse, We Need Jesse is a segment that we do when we bring uh, Jesse into the show to just pretty much uh, give us a rundown on everything that's MMA, boxing, and things of that nature. So. Here we go. We got Jesse up in there. What's up, Jesse? Oh, hold on. Jesse trying to steal the show. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> he got it. There, there, we, go. there we go. He, he was nah. taking off. He was just beard, <laughs> yeah, beard was, everywhere. Was huge, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it was too much Paul. beard. <laughs> so what hey, we man, got? You got some red blush on or something? Why your face look red, man? He put on the makeup. Be... He was. He knew he was gonna be. <laughs> Wow. He saw. He took one look at Jay's mustache and was like, "Oh no!" He powdered up. <laughs> I will not be undone. Oh man, that's that's I pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the lightning in the room. Yeah. I'm not not the, so what not you, a whole lot, man. What you got for but, us? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first off, how's it going, fellas? I hope y'all. I hope y'all week's been all right so far. Yeah, we still black. All right, good. Day. Good deal, good deal. Uh, as far as MMA news, uh, just a rundown of what happened uh, this past weekend with the UFC 220 fight uh, with um, Stipe Miocic versus, uh, uh, as you know from last week, I did say that I was rooting for Nganu uh, to win this fight. Um, he was very powerful puncher um, and everything like that, but he got exposed uh, by Stipe Miocic um, this past Saturday um, pretty much put him on the ground and nullified his game and, and pretty much a uh, new term for, you know, 
a lot of people that aren't used to MMA is a uh, ground and pound, you know what I'm saying? So he pretty much got uh, put on the ground and just beat up uh, pretty much through the entire fight. Um, and it's one thing that um, Angano needs to learn is just the other aspects of the sport instead of just knocking people out. Um, the other fight um, on that card, oh, it did go uh, all five rounds uh, to a unanimous decision. Um, the next fight uh, for Stephen Wojciech, uh, it's going to probably be against Cain Velasquez, uh, who was a former UFC heavyweight champion. Um, don't know if many of you guys know about him, uh, but uh, he definitely holds uh, Mexican pride to the fullest. Has brown pride written across his chest. Uh, he's probably one of the uh, uh, one of the top heavyweights in the game. So that should be coming up next. Don't know when that's going to be. Um, on the undercard of that, um, as I stated last week, Daniel Cormier uh, versus Vulcan Ozdemir. Um, it was for Cormier's. It was technically to defend his lightweight, uh, light heavyweight championship, but uh, he, as he stated, he felt like it was just a vacant title until he actually fought for it. Um, so once again, um, Cormier dominated um, like he does every other. John Jones. Uh, if it's not John Jones, he's. Uh, <laughs> if it's not John Jones, you know he's he's pretty much uh, whooping up on everybody. So he won that fight by. Uh, a second round KO stoppage uh, with uh, punches on the ground. Uh, once again, once again, ground and pound. Um, uh, what Dana White wants to do right now with the two uh, champions from heavyweight and light heavyweight right now is to make a, um, a super match between Daniel Cormier and Stipe Mojic. As Daniel Cormier used to be uh, a heavyweight fighter when he came into the sport, and he's still undefeated as a heavyweight. So. That would be interesting to see. I don't know if it's actually going to happen. Uh, a lot of things have to play into that, but um, that would be probably the next thing up. Uh, as Daniel Cormier really doesn't have a whole lot of challenges in that division. Uh, and Steve Pajomorczyk, he only has the one with Cain Velasquez. So we might see that happen. The thing that happened, as I stated last week, with uh, the Bellator uh, fight that happened on Saturday as well, um, the one big fight out of that was, uh, <laughs> which is terrible, but it was uh, Quentin Rampage Jackson versus Chael Sonnen. Uh, Ch- Chael Sonnen pretty much won the fight, uh, pretty much wrestled his way uh, to a victory. Uh, he threw hands a little bit, which was kind of surprising with Rampage, but uh, Rampage, is, he's a one-dimensional fighter. Um, doesn't have what he used to have. I mean, he's old, so it's just an old man sport. Actor. He's a great actor. No, he ain't. Well, that, that's well, he, was, that, he, was, he was incredible in eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> how could you do worse than Mr. T? Like, how could you be? <laughs> He's a great actor with that one role. <laughs> but, uh, he killed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but outside of uh, outside of those events, the only other news story coming out of this uh, this week is a possible uh, match with uh, Cyborg Santos. Uh, as you know, she's uh, the 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 women's. She's a beast in the women's division. Nobody's beating her. Nobody can. I don't know too many guys that can. Uh, I kind of dare J Rock to get in there and fight her, but you know he's kind of <laughs> <laughs> fight a woman. <laughs> I, I don't know if you anyway. So moving <laughs> on, but, but but she's gonna she's uh, supposed to be fighting uh, Amanda Nunes, who uh, was the last woman to beat uh, Ronda Rousey, uh, pretty much. Submitted, uh, sorry, cemented uh, Ronnie Rousey's um, uh, <laughs> retirement in, uh, in in MMA altogether. Um, so um, actually, that would probably be a either Amanda Nunes would be moving up in weight or it'd be a catch weight bout. It probably won't be uh, Cyborg coming down because she struggles coming down in weight. But that's news. Um, one thing I did want to uh, speak on in the boxing world. Um, I didn't get to speak on it last weekend. I actually kind of Did forgot you? about it. I thought it was the fight was going to happen later. But thanks to J-Rock, he sent me a nice little reminder about it. But uh, Errol Spence Jr. Uh, versus Lamont Peterson happened this weekend. Um, it happened I heard on, about that one. Yeah, it was on Showtime. Uh, it was The fight was in the Barclays Center. Um, um, Errol Spence Jr., um, he's pretty much an up-and-coming fighter. Um, this guy has won literally his last seven fights by KO or TKO. Um, he's just a dominant champion. He's going to be, um, I really would like to see him become the new face of boxing along with, uh, Terrence Crawford and Dante Walter. Uh, Errol Spence Jr. Uh, pretty much get to the fight. Um, uh, he pretty much dominated, uh, Lamont Peterson from the opening bell. Um, you know, a lot of combinations, a lot of hard shots, um, 
Lamont Peterson was just really getting uh, ragdolled in there. Um, the, his uh, his coach had to step in and actually stop the fight. Uh, Lamont Peterson said, hey, if you allow me to keep going, I would have kept going. But uh, the touching moment about it was his, his coach looks at him as a son, and he's more like a father figure to him. So he said that it was bigger than boxing. He wanted to see his, you know, he didn't want to see him have long-term damage because he was getting beat up pretty bad by Earl Spence Jr. Um, but hats off to Lamar Peterson. He did a, a really great job. But once again, Errol Spence Jr. is probably um, the, he's going to probably be the new face of boxing for sure. I would definitely look out for him. I would definitely watch his fights uh, whenever they come up uh, for sure. All right. Um, well, he's just, he's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's Jesse. And we can like to call the segment. We need Jesse. Anytime we want to talk boxing or MMA, our man come through and he always informs us and, and educates us on everything in that, in those categories. So thank you, Jesse. Mm -hmm. We about to end off the All show right. the way we always end up every show. We got about four more minutes. J rock. I'm looking at you, uh, to give us our final cut. So, uh, J rock, you go ahead and start off with the final cut boss. All right, uh, last night uh, in San Antonio, LeBron James uh, in um, defeat. He scored 28 points, but he uh, scored 30,000 points. And a lot of people, they've given this man flack for everything that he's done over his career. But you got to give the man a lot of respect. He's been a family man. He's given back to his community. He's always been out there, you know, giving. You know, every teammate that he's had, even with uh, Kyrie Irving, they've always had good things to say about him. You know, it's just, you know, I always, uh, LeBron James, to me, he's been the most criticized athlete in the history of the world. Like, people say Michael Jordan, but LeBron James has been the most criticized athlete from when he was uh, in high school until now. You know, he's made decisions that has changed the face of basketball. His decision to go to Miami, you know, and build a team has caused other people to go to teams and do that. His decision to go back to Cleveland was a decision everybody was happy with because he brought his uh, franchise a championship. But now he's in a bad spot right now. He's, he has a team that's very bad right now, and it's almost like it's a product of his his environment, what he put together. So it's, you know, I'm not a person for somebody getting fired, but it looks like Tyrone Lou will be fired. They're trying to get George Hill. They're trying to get DeAndre Jordan. To me, it just kind of like messes up this thing called basketball because you don't you get a team but then you're not happy with them then you want to just start breaking the team apart. I just hope that LeBron stays in Cleveland and fixes this thing and ends his career in Cleveland and doesn't go anywhere else. Uh, congratulations on being the seventh player in NBA history to get 30k. You got a little bit of time left. Okay, a little bit. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. real quick. Okay. Uh, miss your windows of opportunities, man. No matter what it is, a lot of times we let fear keep us from, um, you know, reaching certain goals in our lives. And uh, we only got one life to live. So whenever you get your window of opportunity, don't second guess it. Pray about it. And if you hear from God and He says go, then go. You know, and go and go and go to it fearlessly. Uh, fear is probably the one thing that keeps people from realizing their true potential. And with that, since I don't have a lot of time, thank you, J-Rock. Um, <laughs> don't tell God about your big problems. Tell your big tell your problems. You got to be a God, and I'm out. All right. So, listen, man, I, we love doing this show, and we love coming together, and it's a beautiful part of our life. When we look around, we get a chance to see all the beautiful things that we have going for us and friendship and love and, and, and sports and all the things that we celebrate about our culture. We get a chance to do that here. And we do it because you guys listen, you pay attention to it, you watch it, you comment, you enjoy it. And you do it yourself when you go to your local barbershop and when you go and hang out with your people. And so enjoy those things in life. So as you set up this weekend or, you know, or whenever you watch this, Make sure you go out and you enjoy some time with your family and all the uh, people that, you know, you normally have a good time with. All right. So I'm going to end my part of the show by what I always say. Hate can't drive out hate. Only love can do that. Thank you for listening to the Barbershop 918. And remember, you can check us out at www.thebarbershop918.com. All right. So check us out there. And we got got a few more seconds. I, I want to make it an even 45. We got like 20 seconds. 
Check us out on Facebook. Uh, uh, they on iTunes. Facebook right now. Yeah. It's Instagram. YouTube. Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout. YouTube. You can always catch our show on Buzzsprout. And, you know, if you just got time to just listen to it in podcast form, then there you go right there. So We everywhere, baby. Make sure we you everywhere. share this. Share this. Yes, we are. Share it out. And we out. Oh, that's my you job. Have a my that's job. His job. Oh, my bad. My bad. All right.